So you may or may not be aware that NZXT have made motherboards before, but only on the Intel platform. Well now, they've decided to make one for AMD users. But is it any good? Let's do this. I wish these files would transfer faster. Come on! Whoa, is that the Firecuda 510 NVMe drive with its blistering fast speeds of 3450 megabytes a second read, 3200 megabytes a second write, and capacities of up to two terabyte? I can have these files transferred in no time. And if I'm looking for the ultimate performance, I could even get the fourth generation Firecuda 520. I better check the link in the description to find out more details. So first up, let's have a little bit of a history lesson. NZXT released their first motherboard back in the early part of 2018, and it was aimed at a very, very specific market, DIY builders. At the time, they believed that they had the secret source that everyone was craving. Sadly, it kind of sucked, mainly because of the lack of connectivity options, and more importantly, it had a kind of old clunky looking BIOS that just couldn't compete with, you know, the big boys out there. And it was overpriced by quite some margin. Now, one thing it did actually have going for it was the unique design. Instead of painting the PCB itself, they plumped for a kind of armor casing to make it stand out from the rest. They tried again with Z390, which again had the same clunky BIOS, but I guess it did have more connectivity, but it felt kind of more like a refresh. Moving on a little bit more, Z490. Well, that changed everything as NZXT took on ASRock instead of using ECS. So we had a better BIOS, more functionality again, and a pretty reasonable price point, at least compared to the competition. Now, one thing the community did ask for, however, was having a board like this with its kind of unique iconic styling, but something that supported AMD processors, especially with the huge gains that AMD have been making in the enthusiast DIY market. And well, here it is the N7B550. Now, looking at the board, just like the kind of previous boards, it is available in two colors, black or white, and it keeps the same kind of unique armor design. Now, along with the clear CMOS button, the N7 now has a BIOS flashback button, again, on the rear IO. And <laughs> speaking to NZXT, there's actually a very good reason for this. It's because, well, it's down to AMD constantly updating the adjuster code. And typically every time they do that, they actually break things. So it's, we fixed all this, but we broke this. So at least they've thought of that by, you know, adding that button in there. So why B550, I hear you ask? Well, you get most of the frills of X570, but for a fraction of the cost. You get support for Ryzen 3000, 4000 APUs, and 5000 series processors. You also get PCIe Gen 4, tons of USB functionality, which again is something N7 customers commented on with previous gen boards and the lack of it. And on top of that, they've also added in Wi-Fi 6E to keep up with the competition. Though the routers for, you know, how actually having that capability is still just stupidly expensive at the moment. Now for NZXT, having an ecosystem is, I guess, their end goal. They want you to buy their case, their power supply, their cooler, and now their motherboard, no matter whether you're an AMD or an Intel user. Now, it would be interesting to see if they actually do bring out an X570 board to the market, but I fear it's gonna be a little bit harder to compete with brands who have been doing this for decades, especially on that higher end of the scale. So being part of kind of the ecosystem, obviously the board has integrated cam support for controlling fan and lighting profiles. And I know lots of you are gonna be screaming at the screen. It has actually got a lot better lately. So what's the technical stuff, Andy? Well. It has a pretty beefy power setup, actually. It has 12 plus two phase design with each MOSFET rated at 50 amps each. 12 for the CPU and then two consequently for the SOC. So it's pretty much on par with, I guess, most of its B550 competitors. Though the popular B550 e Gaming from ASUS has a 14 plus two setup and comes in slightly cheaper than this. I mean, speaking of price, you'll be looking at $230 in the US and $209.99 in the UK. So what about keeping the power delivery cool? Well, the N7B550 looks very similar to the Z490 with a large L-shaped heatsink that kind of flows round into the rear IO. Other than this, there's a large heatsink over the chipset and you could argue that kind of the whole armor acts a little bit like a heatsink too, with the exception of where the M.2 slots are. They may look like heatsinks, but don't be fooled. They're actually made from plastic. So serve absolutely no purpose whatsoever for cooling especially on Gen 4 drives, which as we know, can get a little bit warm. Now, depending on the CPU you use, this will actually dictate what speeds the two M.2 slots run at 
with the first having Gen 4 speeds if using with a Ryzen 3000 or 5000 series CPU, otherwise you'll get Gen 3 speeds. While the second slot supports PCIe Gen 3 and SATA based drives, but it does actually share bandwidth with the fifth and sixth SATA ports. So it's definitely something where you'll have to go onto the website or look in the manual and just kind of decipher, is it gonna be right for you? Now, expansion slot wise, it's kept quite simple with two X16 slots, two X1 slots, and an E key for the pre-installed Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. Like the M.2 slots though, the speeds that the X16 slots actually run at depend on the CPU used. So if you're using a 3000 or a 5000 series CPU, then the first X16 slot will run at Gen 4 speeds, while the second will run at Gen 3 by four speeds. If you're using a 4000 series APU though, the first slot will run at Gen 3 X16 speeds, and the board also supports Crossfire. Does anyone still use Crossfire? I mean, considering the last cards to support it were the RX 500 series and the Vega 56 and 64, I guess it's not hugely popular anymore, but it has it, yay. Now a big criticism to NZXT's last boards was the lack of USB connectivity, but they've definitely upped their game there with a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C front panel connector, two USB 3.2 Gen 1s for four front panel ports, and three USB 2.0 for an additional six front panel ports. I mean, are there even any cases out there with that amount of ports? I don't think so. Now, one thing I love about these boards are the fan headers and some of the other connectors because they're all either at the top of the board or at the bottom of the board. So at the top, we've got the fan headers uh, along with two NZXT RGB headers, three fan headers at the bottom, an RGB and an addressable header, power and reset buttons, which is quite nice if you're benchmarking and running outside of a case, and post LEDs, though, I think personally I'd prefer a debug LED, which they did actually have on previous boards. So I'm not sure why it's gone. Uh, also, you will find that there are some voltage readout points so you can use your multimeter with it. Everything you need as a DIY enthusiast. Now sticking with connectivity, the rear IO has been jacked up quite a bit with a clear CMOS button, BIOS flashback that we already spoke about, Wi-Fi 6E antennas, HDMI if you're using a Ryzen 4000 series APU, a huge array of USB ports of varying speeds, as well as a type C port, 2.5G Ethernet and your audio connectors, including SP diff. Now, moving on to the all important thing, testing. I hate testing motherboards for the most part. They perform the same when using all of the same hardware on the same chipset. Sometimes we see certain boards kind of pull ahead in some tests and then fall rapidly behind in others. So it really can be a bit of a mixed bag. And that's exactly how the N7B550 did. So I'll let you see. Let's run them glorious benchmarks.
So as you can see, it definitely showed it can keep up with the big guns. A few tests did actually show some odd results and I have informed NCXT of this as a simple change to the V-Core voltage and load line calibration actually helped to fix this. So I'm guessing a simple BIOS update should actually thick, kind of fix things here. And with a potential impeding update from AMD, we should actually see some performance increases over time, not only on this board, but on other competitor brands as well. Now, as someone who's covered I think now every single N7 board that NZXT have brought out since inception, I can see that NZXT are actually listening to their customers. They're giving them the features that they want. And more importantly, because this was a huge mistake when they first brought the boards out, they're actually bringing that price down to a more reasonable level. Now, I'm not a massive fan of ASRock BIOSes. So with this, I did kind of find that certain options weren't, I don't know, they weren't where I expected them to be. But that's kind of more of a personal preference. I do feel that there's a severe lack of white motherboards on the market and NZXT have kind of, you know, catered for that. So I guess, you know, take the good with the bad. Obviously black is available, but I honestly prefer the white one. I think, you know, it's great if you want to take it off as well and mod it and do something crazy with it. Overall, NZXT have shown that I guess they are able to actually offer a unique product that can compete. And I'm intrigued to see if other brands go down the same route and, you know, what other product lines NZXT may enter into as well. Maybe graphics cards are next, who knows? Because, you know, we can't get them at the moment. Let me know what you think of the NZXT N7 B550 and their kind of line of motherboards in general, especially now that they have something for both AMD and Intel. And I've also heard that their Z590 board is on the horizon. So we've got that to look forward to as well, I guess, in the next couple of months. Hope you enjoyed the video though, guys. If you did, you know exactly what to do and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, bye-bye.